Hi there, welcome back to this video tutorial where we're going to give you an update on the latest version of Dakota, okay, this optimization, optimization tool. So the latest version is Dakota 6.18. So here on the website, you have released now the links and everything. So uh, this was released recently, okay, about two weeks ago from the date of this recording. And honestly, I think it was updating. It has very interesting update, but I think the, the most important advancements are related to the Python integration. Okay. These things are getting much better. So I used to work with, with Dakota using Python, but also using some other scripting, but now things are getting more tightly integrated. So it's, it's getting much, much better. So if you want to read the release notes, also just in the website, also in the description you will have it so as you saw here we're going to talk about how to to to, to install dakota from the previous version so we have a previous video okay installing dakota in open 15.5 and version 6.18 now we're going to work with version 6.19 which is the latest one so you go in the repository and you can download the version so here it's up to you you have the binary, pre-compiled binaries, or you want to compile from the source code. So in my case, I will do the compilation from the source code and using OpenSUSE 15.5 and also Windows existing Linux, but it will work exactly as you are working with virtual machine, native installation, or any other operating system. You just need the minimum libraries to compile. So I will download this one. Okay, you have the source code for the command line interface. And also many, many people ask, about the graphical user interface so you can download it here so this is already pre-compiled it's in java so you don't need to do anything to to compile so in any case i will show you how to use it so this is the, the two libraries that we're going to to download so in my case okay let me go into windows existing linux and already download the files okay i put everything there and I have the previous version, okay? And we're going to install 6.19. Something important that there are a few requirements in the video description. You have it here, I have the, the text file. So they're exactly the same as in version 6.18. So if you follow the previous in in installation, it should compile out of the box. Just download, extract, and it should compile. In any case, we're going to do it live step by step. If you didn't follow the previous video, okay, or you are doing from scratch, just copy and paste these lines. I want to remind you this is open source 15.5. So you are using another operating system, you just need to find the equivalent library. So we have standard compilers then regarding boost you need to you, you need to install this one these are very important and you need to install also the, the same version okay the one one at 1.75 okay sometimes the default is 1.66 i don't recall in open source 15.5 it's still the default but in any case if you have an older version just replace it with the new one uh it, it's not going to damage break your your installation so in any case you have the link in the video description to install all the libraries and then just to compile a standard steps we're going to do it Okay, here, then remember that you need to just, sometimes you need to update your compilation system make, so you have a comment there. And finally, update your bash RC to add your file. So let's do the installation here, step by step. So the first step will be extract the files. So let me go here and... So first, this one, this is the graphical user in interface. So that one you need to compile Anything you just need to extract it and it's ready to use. And I will show you that. And now let me go here and let me start extract the source code. And there you go. So what I wanted to show you uh, here. So let me go. Um, where do I have my. OK, so I'm working here and important that, OK, this is the, 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 the graphical user interface. So this is a this is in a JavaScript. So it, it, the executable is Dakota UI. So one thing that let me open here my, my bash 
RC file. Okay, so when you compile and add the code, you need to add it to your bash RC. So here I already modify. So previously I have 6.18, now on 6.19. So you just need to add these lines. Okay, remember that you have in the video description the link and you have it there. So it will be the user, whatever you put it, okay, where you have all the executables and this will point to your graphical user interface. Here's where you have it. And just let me show you that I just extracted. Okay. And there you go. That code that UI. So if you want to test if it is okay, you no, know, after you add everything in the graphical user in interface, you got it there. So your graphical user interface and that's all. Okay. So you know that this is working. So later I will prepare a video about this and how to use it, but somehow I prefer to, to you to use my uh, command line interface. I find it a little bit more faster to parameterize, parameterize things, but you can do it here. So let me go here and not go into more details. So we know that the graphical user interface is working. Now let's go back to Dakota and I want to install now the source code. So the first step, like in the previous one, you create a directory where you want to have your Dakota installation. So I will call it like this, Dakota 19. Okay, 19.0. I create this directory. Now I enter into this directory. There you go. You, it's an empty directory. So here, the steps also are very straightforward. Now it's using CC Make. You have it here. So you basically, this next step, you enter in the, into the directory and then CC Make. Okay, and CC Make will look all, all the files that you have in the original directory and I will do the configuration and everything. So let me do it here. So now you enter in CC Make, the first step is press C to configure all your scripts. And if you are not missing a library, this should end with no error, no warning. So see that here is perfect. Remember, follow just this step in the, in the text file or as you follow the previous video, this should work with no problems. So it and come here and now here you have many options. Okay. And let me stress that these are many options. I recommend you to use the default options. The only one that you need to change here is this one. Okay. This is pointing to the directory where you are installing uh, Dakota, where you want to install Dakota. So in this case, uh, remember that we're working in this directory. Okay. So let me put it here. It is. Okay, better. I have it here. So let me go Dakota just to do a copy and paste of the path. I'm a little bit lazy today. So I do PWD. So this is my path and just put it here. And there you go. This is the only thing. So here now when you compile all your libraries and binaries will be here. If you don't do this step, it will install everything in the user directory in the is in assisting the local system wide directory. So you need to have the uh, administrator uh, password to do to modify that. And even if you have it, I don't recommend it to to do. I prefer to do as an as, as a as a user. Okay, but it, it is up to you. So like this, there are many options here, but the only one that only directory that you need to change is that one. And then just take some time, read a little bit all the options. Okay, to see if you want to change something, add something, something new. I want to point out that also you have some advanced options here. So you press T and you toggle advanced options and more stuff. So for us, this is the basic, it will work. But if you want to go into more advanced options or new options, just feel free. So I press C again. It will reconfigure according to the modifications I, I did you know, in the previous window. So everything is okay. See that there is no error. Okay, at this point, I'm ready. So remember, every time that modif you modify something here, you will need to configure. Okay, so you press C, you configure. And after you have all your configuration, your final step will be press D to generate your final script. So here, I press G, I generate my final script. So basically, CC make move files, prepare everything for the clean compilation. So the final step will be just to compile. So I will go make and I will go GJ32. So I have 32 cores in a portable computer where using e 3 so those new Intel. So that, that is quite crazy that now 
portable computer can pack all that power. So I will do the compilation and that's all. Off you go. So I will leave it running just to see that we don't have any error and then pretty much we are done. Okay, so at this point, the compilation is done. So it was quite fast. I was using all the cores. So the fan in my computer is just super loud. So hopefully the AI tool is just suppressing all that now, but it's better if it's super, uh, super loud. So in any case, it's done the compilation. Uh, one warning, so when you compile in parallel, it doesn't matter what you are compiling. Sometimes it may happen that the compilation will crash, you know, so that is you. Sometimes some problems when communicating between processors. So if that happened to you, just launch again the compilation. Okay, we'll keep continuing from the point of where it crashed. But be careful about that. So at this point, we compile. The final step is make, install, and this one will just move the binaries and libraries, and you're going to have your binaries. Okay. So also look at that is moving some files and examples. So feel free to to surf to check to browse your installation. So you have many files there. And at this point we're, we're done. So let me go here. Um, we have the installation, the bin file, bin and lib is where you have all the library and everything. So the final step, no. So at this point we're formally done. As you see, everything was transpiring, no error. Okay, following your, this step. So just to remind you that you need to update your bash RC. In my case, I already updated. No, I'm not going to do it, but these are the lines that you need to do that you have it to, to add that you have it in the in the video description. There is a document with all these steps. So you need to add the new path to the binaries in Dakota. Okay, then some test file, and then also the path to the GUI, Dakota GUI, if you want to install that, it's not compulsory, but you need to add, add this one. So your Dakota is going to find everything. So that is the only thing. Uh, also, if you want, well, uh, you wanna, I recommend you to, if you want to keep open for uh, Dakota 6.18, uh, do not load both libraries at the same time because it might give you problems. Okay, so try to switch from one to the other. So you can add a, an alias to do that, but don't load both at the same time. And in any case, just you can erase 618. I still have it. I'm not going to erase it because I'm doing some testing to see the modifications. Is there any big modifications? So just to show you, final stack Dakota minus V, and there you go. It will give you the version and you know that everything is working, but it's still on testing to see there are modifications. So far, there are small modifications that I think any user can <coughs> can get through, the, through that. So to end the video, let me show you that now we need to test it. Not only this test, but also we need to do a test with a, with a case. So in this case, I added in the directory. So also in the video description, you will have this case, but also in our subsisting Linux, you know, in our distribution, we're putting this folder, my example, and there is a small sample here that you can test that goes. Uh, so it's a classical example. I really like this example. And basically it's a case that I think we all have seen if you are engineer, mathematician, so when you're studying calculus, just the optimization case of the soda can. Now you have the problem definition and so on. So here, just by formulating the problem, computing the derivatives, you can get not to the optimal solution. But in this case, we're going to, to use the quota now to do the optimization. So the interesting is that there are six folders and different formulations of the problem, and we, pretty much we should get to a solution, something like this. Now, this is the mathematical solution. In reality, you know, this solar can doesn't have these values, something like that. In any case, I'm not going to detail just to show you how to run. So you go my examples, and this will be the final sanity sanity check. Now, to know if every, everything is okay. I go to fork one, and let me just run this case, Dakota minus. So this one is running Dakota, and I, 
kind of, let's say, coupling with an external black box solver. It's a small Python problem, but it's a program, but it's equivalent to use any other application. So later we're going to work with OpenFun Fluent and we can link it under everything works. Okay, so see that the case is working. It's doing the optimization. We have the solution here and we know that it passed the test. So you have there a few other cases you want you can play feel free to play with them. And just talking about a big improvement, something that I really like about this version, that it is a tight, there is a tighter integration between Python and Dakota, okay? And now that will let me, I do also some machine learning and I'm a strong supporter of this library, XGBoost and yeah, I tested and yeah, now I can do things easier. But in any case, this is all the subject of another video. So here you go. You have the installation for Dakota 6.19. If you are using version 6.18, I recommend you to do the upgrade. Maybe also try to check now your previous scripts, know what, whatever you are doing, if it is still working. In my case, I'm doing very specialized things. So just I just mentioned XGBoost and I have some very uh, convoluted scripts and they're not working anymore with version 6.19 of Dakota, but it's a small details. Now it's some things that it changed, but I think it shouldn't be a problem to, to fix that. So with this, I think I conclude this videos, this installation, and hopefully soon we're going to have some more extensive tutorial. So thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.